Hello and welcome everybody to this tutorial. So my name is uh, Dr. Benjamin and your senior lecture for today. Uh, this is a class about surgical uh, cases, many for physician assistant. This is all more common uh, uh, surgical cases you want to find. Uh, I mean, in your career, in your career, physician assistant, which you are to be aware. There are many more, but for me. These are the most uh, important ones. So let's go start the presentation. We start talking about appendicitis. You know, appendicitis is, is no longer a hot topic in medical history. And the majority of the time, the diagnosis is essentially clinical. This is very important. It's essentially clinical. You have to be, to do your clinical examination very well. Um, and find your diagnosis, you have to be able to that. At the old school, usually we use a uh, abdominal x-ray to to confirm the, the appendicitis. In this case, you can see this uh, x-ray showing a strip of free A along the right paracoli uh, gutta. You can see this, this uh, white arrow here, or this area here. Remember, this is very old, old school, and also you can see here there's a appendicolite. Hmm? It's also a sign of appendicitis. But the well, these days we use uh, it's about 30 years or more than than that. We are using ultrasound for the confirmation of the type of diagnosis. So we use uh, ultrasound for that, which is uh, very inexpensive safe and widely available so almost everywhere you can find ultrasound those are the same availability of the s rays or CT but ultrasound is almost everywhere a small ultrasound is almost everywhere even a radiology or ultrasonographer can do it even general doctors are prepared can do the diagnosis also a uh, general appendicitis is the the accuracy of the appendicitis is the, sen the sensitivity and specificity and uh, specificity is almost uh, 100% and for very important there is no radiation in it hmm? there is no radiation in it so always in case you are suspecting appendicitis the first thing to do is your clinical examination and the request for the ultrasound hmm? and wait for your report and what is important with ultrasound so you can make a differential with other pathologies who are similar to appendicitis like in case of the female ovarian cyst ectopic pregnancy or two ovarian abscesses also PID per inflammatory disease or in case of the male we can also roll out a, a renal colic you know there is this this uh, ureteri calculus which can produce this severe renal colic in the right side and can produce this kind of pain. Also, any type of of localized uh, bowel infection, like ileitis, that also can mimic appendicitis. So, with the ultrasound, we can roll out all that kind of diseases and also many more. Well, these are the most important one. So here you can see the this example of ultrasound. There is fluid, this appendix is appearing here, which is distended and the wall is very thick. You can see here. So it's it's closer. That is the, the dominant wall here. So the mass of the dominant wall is also almost attached to the dominant wall. This inflammatory appendix. So your report, you will, you will see this type in your report, the ultrasound, you will see this, uh, uh, the dilated appendicitis or maybe a uh, sign of perforated appendicitis when there is fluid. Uh, the final impression that the appendicitis, you can feel your diagnosis in this, in this area and send the, and proceed with the patient with the send to the theater. So appendicitis, that's number one. 
So let's move. The another more uh, thing important is you want to look in this case children is into succession or invagination. So we we'll call it that. So into succession is an important cause of uh, acute abdomen in children. And the most important in to, in to search, you have to add very quick. You have to add very quick because you have to eliminate the bowel necrosis. You have to eliminate this complication. Hmm? Bowel necrosis can lead to another disease if the patient and um, produce more complication in, in this case of, of patients and more babies usually so when occurring in the adult population it should be above 60 70 is usually caused by a focal lesion hmm? this focal lesion the majority of the cases is cancer okay so it's coming the old patients in the form of cancer so the vast majority of intussusation occurring in children, that's 95% of the of the times, usually after the first three months of life. So it's more common be, between three months to five years. Between three months to five years. We are focusing only on radiology. Uh, you, you, uh, I know you know the signs and symptoms of the type of patient. So the goal uh the, the the gold standard for the diagnosis of intussusception is ultrasound is ultrasound the sensitivity and specificity is higher higher than the appendicitis this is very close to 100 percent i can say it's very it's 100 percent that depend of the operator or the, on the experience who are doing the the ultrasound but in in the hands of the is experience with a sonorafa or radiology is is hundred percent. But however, children with uh, classic findings need to be investigated with enema, which is above diagnostic and therapeutic. This 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 is very important. Diagnostic and therapeutic because we bar with this enema you can solve the you can you can solve the problem. So, but this study should be done in the combination with two things, radiology, radiology things and the surgical thing. It should be together in case any complication, hmm? in case of any complication. Now, ultrasound signs include target sign, also known as uh, donut sign, and pseudo kidney sign. That is the transfer view or the transfer view but in the sagittal view is similar like a sandwich so remember design target sign when you receive your report the first thing is you want to write in case of the succession for the ultrasonographer is target sign as soon as you, you, you read this target sign you are in the presence of the into succession I mean you know the clinical of this kind of disease is very classy as well but with this confirmation from the ultrasound there is no doubt it's an into succession these are example of target sign you see like a target with different rings mm -hmm. the first ring second ring and then and the third ring this is a sagita sagita view it look like a, a sandwich okay So this is case of ultrasound. You can see you will see there the target sign. You see it's very classic. Uh, Sketch is very classic. Mm. And also the report should be coming like that. So it's hundred percent. The first thing you have to request in case of of intussusception is ultrasound. Remember always that. So you see this uh, long axis uh, here, sagittal view, look, look as a sandwich, and this is the corona or transverse uh, view, this look like a target sign. 
It's very important to know that. Now, let's go talk about other emergencies. In, in this case, is intestinal obstruction. That is very important. Uh, I think so yet. There also is almost uh, every day you see the patient with the intestinal obstruction. You remember from the last year, we talked a lot about intestinal obstruction. And this is the most important uh, pathology you have to follow in the in these uh, surgical you know, cases. So the first thing for intestinal so patients with intestinal obstruction, you have to require for abdominal rad abdominal radiography plus ultrasound, abdominal radiography plus uh, ultrasound at the same time. Okay, and then if there is any facility, we can suggest a CT scan in case it's available. It's on uh, hospital is not available. You are in the country, inside of the country or rural area, it should be very difficult to get CT scan. So abdominal X-ray and ultrasound. Abdominal X-ray, remember the three views, supine, erect, and lateral decubitus. The three views at the same time, supine, erect, lateral decubitus, plus ultrasound. So when the patient will come back from the radiology department, they will come in with the final diagnosis. Okay? So uh, this table, what is very important to know? You have to be willing. You have to be willing to uh, make the difference between uh, ileus paralytic ileus and and bowel obstruction, or mechanical obstruction. Paralytic ileus and bowel obstruction, and mechanical obstruction, please. So you remember uh, we have three views. We are lateral decubitus and lateral decubitus. What we are looking like in lateral decubitus is there is a A in the rectum. There is A in the in the rectum. So in case of generalized ileus, you will find there is there is gas. It's yes, there is gas in the rectum. In case of small or or large bowel obstruction, it's no. There is no gas in the rectum. The other view is supine view. The supine view, in this case, is to look at the location, to look at the location of the of the dilated bowel. So in this case, is the if the you remember if the from the last year if the bowel is situated in the middle part of the abdomen. That means the the is a small bowel obstruction. Is the is the bowel situated in the peripheral in the peripheral part of the abdomen? That means it's a large bowel obstruction. The other thing is the air flu levels. For that reason, we use a erect position, abdominal as ray in erect position. Remember, if the bowel is the bowel is is the air flu level is wider than tall is wider than 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 two that means it's small bowel obstruction is uh, taller than wider that means it's a is a, a, a large bowel obstruction in this case see in this middle hmm? the supine view the small bowels in the in the middle in the middle of the of the abdomen you can see this one as well, we have this uh, conniven bubbles is also is in the middle of the conniven bubbles. So that means uh, there is there is small bowel uh, obstruction. So and then remember our request for the ultrasound. So what happened in ultrasound? In ultrasound, the abdomen, the majority of the cases is distended. But sometimes we can see a uh, uh, extended so uh, full in gas, and it's in, sometimes impossible to look at the side of the abdomen. But sometimes we can see the dilated bowel with increased peristalsis, like this one, with back and forth uh, movement, with back and forth movement. That increased peristalsis with back and forth movement. They see the the, the obstruction is very close. Mm? That mean I also that mean the obstruction is very recently. I mean less than two less than forty eight hours. Because eventually we will pass of the days this uh, peristalsis will to the to go down sometimes just go to a stop to stop the peristalsis. 
because it's, it's a muscle it's a muscle and we can and can get fatigue as well so this back and forth when you see a report with this back and forth movement and dilated bower and increased peristalsis so you are sure is uh, intestinal obstruction and also the the ultrasonorfa can tell you the specific area I mean the specific uh, the, of course the specific area where is the obstruction the where is the obstruction and this is a small or large bowel obstruction okay let's find out another emergencies in, the, in this case is perforation perforation alone in this chart so when, when you suspect the perforation what the things you have to request the first thing is a chest spray chest x-ray no abdominal x-ray chest x-ray you are suspecting perforation chest x-ray then second is ultrasound and then CT scan chest x-ray ultrasound and CT scan in case you are suspecting perforation the more common uh, perforation is a uh, second to pete, pete ulcer, but also in case of in case of uh, West Africa, if the type four perforation, okay, gastroenteritis, right, type four perforation. So it's very important to know that uh, any part of the GI tract may become perforated, okay. As we talk about all the diseases, you can do that. Like appendicitis, diverticulitis, or stone, infection, Crohn's disease, macular diverticulum, any anormality, and many, many more. Also, a blunt trauma can produce that, or a knife, a gunshot, also second, also to abdominal, to, to abdominal surgery. You can find this a second to abdominal surgery, but it should be up to only 72 hours. So if you have any patient second to if you have any patient after the abdominal surgery with demoperitoneum, in this case is gas, you know, in the in the uh, is gas inside the abdominal cavity. So it's normal for seven to seventy two hours. After seventy two hours you have to suspect there is something wrong. It's a mean it's always depend the amount of A the patient has in the abdomen for a uh, general for 72 hours a small a small quantity of a uh, inside of the intradominal cavity is okay after surgery so when you look at pneumoperitoneum you the things you want to look at it is the the a below both uh, a media forms a below both a media forms in this case sometimes the a is always is always uh, uh, start the A uh, start in the right amine diaphragm first. Sometimes you can see all in the right side, and then is the nemoperitone is big. You can see the the gas also also in the left amine diaphragm. This is another example of nemoperitone. You remember the differential of the peritoneum? You have to uh, make differential with sometimes a baseline atelectasis, also with a right uh, suffering abscess. Also, you have to make the differential with meteorism in case of children. Meteorism is the kind of baby starts to cry and cry and swallow e and produce this ten distension of the of their bowels and sometimes can simulate uh, nemoperitoneum and also the chiladitis syndrome chiladitis syndrome can also mimic a nemoperitoneum so you have to be aware of these four differentials it's another sample of nemoperitoneum so let's move on to another uh, abdominal emergency in this case abdominal trauma so it's similar maybe to nemoperitoneum but even normal peritoneum in this also category as well, but also we we, we talk specifically about hemoperitoneum and visceral injury. Um, some non traumatic emergencies like uh, also intestinal obstruction, appendicitis, or, or gut perforation, also side this is peritonitis or GI bleeding. But it's very important to know when you receive this uh, abdominal. Uh, trauma 
which is in the majority of cases is second to road traffic accident. To road traffic accident. So the first thing you have to order, I think at the same time, depending of the of the location of the trauma to be just as, just as right to to rule out any pneumoperitoneum any uh, perforation and abdominal uh, also abdominal x rays to look for other causes. Also is ultrasound, all these at the same time, just as right abdominal radio uh, abdominal chest and abdominal radiograph and ultrasound, all these at the same time. So the that the first uh, fitted they had to pass through the uh, imaging department. They have to go to the ultrasound and the chest and abdominal x ray. Then if they have any doubt the radiology and the and the surgeon may be discussed to send in the patient for CT scan. So uh, when you do uh, request for the ultrasound, so the ultrasonographer which will be focused in the liver, kidneys, uh, spleen, pancreas, and go bladder, and bladder. That will be focused mainly focus on this one. Any of these uh, uh, viscerals can be damaged, o o also can be perforated. Others can be perforated, okay? And produce this uh, hemoperitoneum, hmm? hemoperitoneum or ascites, depending on the case of the which part is, is damaged. So ultrasound is very important. Remember, in this case, if the patient allowed to do that, you have to request for the battery of the chest ray and dominant rays, and then also ultrasound. It is on the to this side uh, further, depending on the where you are where you are working on your team and the, the hospital availability so you can request a CT scan but the first thing is x-rays and ultrasound that's very important to know this is another sample you can see that there is a in this case is hemoperitoneum it's this kind of fluid hmm? this anechoic area black area remember anechoic or hypoechoic mean fluid hmm? in case of this uh, ultrasound ultrasound language ultrasound of a language so let's continue moving oh, I don't know this is you have to look at it it's a genitourinary emergency so mm -hmm. in this case you you look for urinary tract stones hematuria or urinary tract trauma urethral injuries or scrota injuries swelling scrotosium pedidemitis or many 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 more so what happened in this case, the more we have, you know, we have a lot of type of studies in case of the, of the genitourinary uh, system. But mainly one, uh, the first thing we are going to request is ultrasound. The first thing we are going to request is always ultrasound. Mm? So this has to be the first thing with ultrasound. Also, we can add at the same time any plain X-ray, like a KUV, so kidney, ureter, and bladder okay then depending on the result of this so we follow the IVU or CT scan of the abdomen mm -hmm. or other studies specific for the urethra and bladder but depending of the pathology or the trauma of the patient so remember that all everything depends on the pathology or trauma of the patient okay but for for general rule or a majority of the cases we will come with ultrasound and playing s rays KUV okay then we follow the patient with IVU to see the scan of the abdomen it's in the majority of the cases so this is a KUV you can see this stone this is a patient with the left uh, renal colic you see there is a pelvic stone so with the ultrasound to be able to to visualize the stone as well so in this case maybe with the ultrasound is enough to send the patient for treatment and then when the 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 this severe remember this severe pain disappear when you can follow the patient with this uh, KUV or IVU depending of the of the thing which is attending the the patient in that moment so this is uh, the the same thing we have the we have here hmm? 
de de Saint de Saint de, de Saint que dice que si un buff dice la tra eh, es by es by lateral uh, stones in this case and also we have this uh, ureteri stone right ureteri stones remember they can produce a severe pain severe right and alcohol can mimic appendicitis now another uh, cases or uh, emergency you have to take in consideration to account this chest trauma in case of surgical uh, it's chest trauma in chest trauma you can find free fractures, uh, traumatic motoras, pneumotoras, pneumomyastinum pneumomyastinum pulmonary contusion, laceration, hematoma, esophageal injury, diaphragmatic injury hydronemotoras and many many more and also airway foreign body a way for him, which is also very common here in this part of the of the of the Africa is very common the foreign bodies as it as should be fish fish bones it's very common uh, also granules is very common granules and fish bone is very common in this part so in this case you have to order like playing chases ray PA and lateral and the CT scan. Plain chest right, the majority of the cases and plain CT scan. If there is any ultrasonographer in the hospital, we have ability to, follow, to do a lung scan. They also can do a lung scan in this case hmm? to find the motoras of, of any hemotoras uh, or, or, or any of these type of complications, depending on the, of the abilities. Hmm? The abilities of the of the ultrasonographer you have in your hospital or your clinic in this moment. So what is it very important for in surgery is a flay chest. Mm -hmm. So flay chest is you know is is a very uh, I think acute and difficult disease to treat. You can see the this right one or this multiple of fractured okay also in the left we have all this uh, multiple fracture hmm? so flat chest occurs when there is a lot of continuity of a segment of the chest wall with the rest of the thoracic cage or with fall of trauma with two or more ribs hmm? fracture in two or more places results in disruption of normal chest wall movement and paradoxical movement may be seen may, and paradoxical movement may be seen always consider underlying lung injury like a pulmonary contusion okay so in this case Fletcher you have to add very quick you know, very fast say clinically you will see clinically very clear this is a chest you have to stabilize the patient and send it for the x-ray depend of, of course if where you are you are alone you are surgical team but sometimes you should be alone is to, to be a remote clinic and you have to stabilize the patient first how to not to stabilize the patient you have to think in the disease stabilize the patient and send it for the x-ray hmm? and send it for the x-ray and look for the fractures okay so like i said this is a sample of the motor that is a lump here this is the area eight in the pleura space you can see it here very very uh, clay and also it's another sample of pneumotoras hmm? the left pneumotoras see there is displacement or shift of the myastinum to the right side so it's very clear and the motoras this is another sample of the motoras and this is a sample of hydro pneumotoras you see this it is clay area here and with this a flow level so we are in the present hydro motors okay so i think this is all for today i think this is more important thing you have to know about these cases they are more common in this part of i think of the of the country or they are very common and, uh, so i hope you enjoy 
and I see you on class. So, bye-bye.